Hi, this is Jake with Spins Product Intelligence Team, and uh, today we're excited to introduce a great new attribute available in our PI studio. It's non-animal dairy protein, um, and it's an attribute that really underscores Spins' commitment toward providing insights into sustainability and how that's impacting the marketplace. Okay, so first up, uh, let's talk the basics around this ingredient attribute. Uh, so non-animal dairy protein, it is fairly new to the market and it represents a highly disruptive innovation within both dairy and the animal free product segments. Uh, so over the past year, you know, there's been a significant amount of news hype uh, as well as anticipation around precision fermentation. And that's what we're talking about here with non-animal dairy protein. So this is a precision fermentation ingredient that is an exact replica of animal-derived dairy protein. Uh, so it helps products retain the flavor and sensory properties of animal-derived dairy, but without requiring an animal to achieve that. <clears throat> and just a reminder, it's important to note that since these are exact replicas of animal-derived dairy proteins, the implication is that it must still be recognized as a milk allergen. And because of that, you know, non-animal dairy, it emerges as distinctly different from both animal-based and plant-based, but sort of overlapping a bit uh, with both. So this is going to make shopper education and awareness a high priority and something to keep an eye on in regard to uh, the marketplace success of this ingredient. So why does non-animal dairy protein matter? What does it represent to shoppers in the marketplace? Uh, so first, we want to emphasize that with non-animal dairy protein, we're encountering this new branch of the macro trend toward animal-free and climate-friendlier products. So while this ingredient, it's still in the early stages of the innovation life cycle, uh, the potential breadth and depth of its impact on shoppers, brands, and categories is highly significant. Uh, while we first saw this ingredient's emergence in the frozen desserts category, it, it is a highly versatile ingredient with the potential to disrupt categories ranging from protein supplements to chips and snacks uh, to chocolate candy. Um, and of course, you know, the opportunities to incorporate sustainable alternatives are highly sought after by both brands and retailers. So tracking innovative ingredients like this early, it allows us to monitor not just its evolution, but also its white space potential as it continues to grow. And with larger CPG brands uh, now latching onto this ingredient, that, that disruptive presence uh, is really about to hit the market soon. So we're gonna head over to Satori here, and we're gonna check out some quick data points to get a bit more familiar with how it's currently impacting the marketplace. All right, uh, so what we have here is a basic worksheet that combines 52-week aggregated natural channel data with Mulo data, just to give us a quick insight into where non-animal dairy protein can be found today. Uh, we'll also see some of the brands leveraging it. And since we're talking innovation that's in the early stages of its life cycle, uh, we do have some quick stats just to help us understand its current reach. Um, so a couple of key points that we wanna reinforce here is that some of the earliest adopters, so brands like Brave Robot, Nix, Graders, uh, they operate in the ice cream and novelty subcategories that you see on your left, uh, where most of the sales volume can be found. And then some of our newer entrants like Natrieve, Modern Kitchen, those are brands representing uh, the cream cheese and protein supplement subcategories. So when we add it all up, we see uh, 35 non-animal dairy protein products in five subcategories totaling approximately three and a half million dollars. So it is a small corner of the marketplace, but it is one that we expect to grow over the next year as new brands and products hit the market. Okay, uh, so before we wrap this up, there's one more data set that we'd like to review quick. Um, and what we have is trended data per reporting period over the past three years with the bars representing combined total dollar sales in natural and Lulo. Um, so just a reminder, you know, we're talking the vast majority of sales volume uh, for this ingredient um, in the frozen desserts uh, category. So seasonal sales volumes here are expected. Uh, but that said, um, in the summer of 2021, which we see represented uh, right here, um, on the back of a major national release or kind of surge 
uh, of an early adopter brand, uh, that caused a major spike. Um, and since then, we've seen lower sales, uh, but also more stability. Um, and with the period ending January 1st, 2023, we're actually seeing 36.9% growth as compared to that same time period a year ago. So despite overall growth being down in the 52 week time span, uh, we do project growth to return to the segment in 2023. Um, again, you know, buoyed by new brand releases, uh, distribution gains and new products entering on tapped categories and white space. All right, so with that, let's go through our key takeaways here. Uh, first, uh, non-animal dairy protein is an exact replica of dairy protein that's derived from precision fermentation, uh, which makes it a highly visible and watched ingredient on the marketplace. Um, second, it represents a new branch of the macro trend toward animal-free and climate-friendlier products, uh, so it's highly sought after. And third, as we saw in the data, it's still very early, but we are seeing promising signals and growth potential headed into 2023. All right, so that is all that we had for you today. Uh, thanks for joining us, and we will see you next time.